Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a South Korean mystery thriller film called The Silenced. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. The premise of the movie is set in 1938, when Korea is under Japanese rule. In Seoul, a woman is driving her teenage stepdaughter, Shizuko, to an all-girls sanatorium school. It is a place where sickly girls are brought to improve their health by regulating their diet and providing them with proper medicine. Shizuko doesn't want to stay away from her family, but her stepmother is adamant about keeping her in the sanatorium. She plans to go on a trip to Tokyo to join her husband after dropping her off. The girls of the school excitedly look outside the window, intrigued by the new member about to be added to their school. The principal welcomes Shizuko and promises to make her healthy in no time. Then, the counselor of the school goes through her luggage and throws away everything but her clothes. Shizuko wants to keep a notebook with her, but the counselor slaps her in the face for disobedience. Kazue is one of the members of the sanatorium. She is kind and gentle, unlike most of the girls. She welcomes Shizuko and tells her that the counselor was harsh on her just because it is her first day. With time, she is sure to fit in with everyone else. Shizuko is taken to the embroidery class to be introduced to the rest of the members of the school. When they find out that her name is Shizuko, they look at each other in confusion. A girl named Kihira helps her catch up with the class and makes friends with her in the process. Before going to bed, the girls are given a strange medicine that is supposed to improve their health. Shizuko doesn't think much of it and eats it like the rest. At midnight, the unsaid leader of the girls, Yuka, wakes Shizuko and brings her to another room. She bullies her and hits her with pebbles. Suddenly, Shizuko coughs blood and falls to the floor. Kazue arrives and orders the girls to get out. She and Yuka used to be friends, but they have turned into rivals recently. The following morning, Shizuko is summoned to the principal's office. The principal gives her a strange tea and tells her about a competition. Every year, they select two physically outstanding students to send them to Tokyo for further studies in a prestigious school. Every girl is competing to win the grand prize, and the principal wants Shizuko to do the same. Following that, Shizuko is injected with a dose of the medicine that the counselor says will help eliminate her illness. While returning to the room, Kihira approaches her and reveals that someone of her name used to live with them not long ago. It turns out that Yuka, Kazue, and the older Shizuko were best friends. But one day, Shizuko disappeared mysteriously without informing anyone. Later, Kazue takes Shizuko to an underground hidden storeroom. She had found a notebook in the room some time ago and wants Shizuko to have it since hers was taken away by the counselor. The two befriend each other while talking about their past. In school, the level of physical fitness is measured by how long the girls can jump. In their next physical test, Yuka and Kazue score the highest. Shizuko, however, cannot even make the jump. Later, during lunch, the principal asks the girls to take their medicine every day and on time. She emphasizes that the medicine is prescribed to them according to their physical condition and will help them get better. Shizuko quietly asks Kihira what the old Shizuko was like. All of a sudden, Kihira attacks her and tries to choke her to death. Kazue saves Shizuko, but Kihira starts to struggle on her own. Her bones crackle and a white foamy substance comes out of her mouth. A while later, Kihira is back to normal and doesn't remember losing her temper. Shizuko apologizes to her nonetheless. The next day, Kazue and Shizuko sneak out of the school and walk through the forest. After walking for a while, they reach a river. Shizuko is overjoyed as she has never seen a river in her life. In the following physical test, Shizuko manages to jump longer than most of the girls and lands in the third position after Kazue and Yuka. Her health starts to improve and she believes that it is because she finally has a friend she can rely on. Seeing Shizuko and Kazue spending time together, Yuka gets jealous. She puts a dead bird in Shizuko's closet and tells her that she will always be pathetic. However, now that Shizuko is healthy, she doesn't back down. She puts the dead bird on Yuka's plate during breakfast to retaliate. One day, Shizuko discovers a notebook under Kazue's mattress and decides to check it. Inside, she finds a torn picture of Kazue. Then, she notices a necklace on the floor, but before she can pick it up, a hand emerges from under the bed and takes it away. On checking, Shizuko finds no one under the bed. Seconds later, a gruesome-looking girl appears on the other side of the room. 
Shizuko runs outside in fear and bumps into the counselor. When she checks under the bed again, she is surprised to see no one. Then, a girl named Iguchi mysteriously disappears. The principal announces that her mother came in last night and took her home. Shizuko doubts the story because the girl under the bed looked exactly like Iguchi. She tries telling Kazue about the matter but is dismissed. Following that, Kihira asks her if she really saw Iguchi. When Shizuko confirms, she asks her to look under the stairs. To her horror, another girl in the same condition as Iguchi lies inside. When Shizuko retreats in fear, she bumps into Kihira, who is now choking herself. When asked what is wrong, she drops to the floor and struggles to get up. Her bones crackle and her body folds in half. Shizuko runs to call the counselor, but when they return, both Kihira and the other girl are absent. Shizuko is sent to the principal's office, who declares that she is hallucinating and needs a greater dosage of medicine. She also says that Kihira has transferred to another school as of that morning. Shizuko is now sure that something about the school is off. Later, she and Kazue are together on the playground, talking about different things. Shizuko knows that Kazue has been nice to her because she reminds her of the previous Shizuko who lived with them. She doesn't mind being a substitute, but she doesn't like the fact that Kazue doesn't care about her if it weren't for the older Shizuko. Kazue keeps quiet, confirming that she in fact takes care of Shizuko only because of her old friend. Angered, Shizuko jumps like they do on a physical exam and crosses the entire runway. Both of them are just as shocked as the other. They go to the bathroom where Shizuko says that she feels weird and asks for her help. This reminds Kazue of a past event that still haunts her. She runs away and goes to the basement. In the middle of the room is a big box that also reminds her of something from the past related to the older Shizuko. Following the encounter, Shizuko goes to the principal's office and asks to be off the meds now that she is feeling a lot better. The principal agrees and asks her to return to her room. During the next embroidery class, the principal announces that she is going to choose a potential candidate who she thinks will win the competition. Everyone believes it will be either Kazue or Yuka, but to their surprise, she chooses Shizuko. Once the teachers are no longer around, Yuka attacks Shizuko for taking away her opportunity. After being banged on the cupboard several times, Shizuko screams and pushes her back. The force causes the cupboard glass to shatter into pieces. In a fit of rage, Shizuko grabs Yuka by her neck and lifts her into the air. Her strength surprises everyone and no one dares to stop her. She only comes back to her senses when Yuka falls unconscious. Then, Kazue asks her if she is fine. Even though the pieces of glass have dug into her palm, she claims to not feel anything. Kazue is left speechless because her old friend Shizuko also had the same experience. She starts to shake Shizuko violently, asking her to reveal her true identity. In the following scene, Kazue is lying unconscious on a bed, with Shizuko by her side. Taking the opportunity, Shizuko opens Kazue's diary and sees her name written all over it. There is also a box drawn in one of the pages that she recognizes as the box in the storeroom. When Shizuko goes to check, Kazue regains consciousness and follows her. A flashback shows us that the older Shizuko and Kazue were in the storeroom one day. Shizuko had a seizure, as Kihira did earlier. Her hands were wounded, but she couldn't feel anything, and she kept on asking Kazue for help. But Kazue pushed her aside because she was scared. When she returned with the counselor a while later, Shizuko had disappeared without a trace. They were told that she was sent back home, but the night still haunts Kazue. Back in the present, she and Shizuko go to the principal's room and snoop around, hoping to find out why girls disappear from the sanatorium. Suddenly, the principal and a Japanese soldier enter the room. Before the girls can be seen, they hide behind a cupboard. They overhear the principal talking about an experimental use of a drug. After the two leave, the girls open up a safe with a key. Inside, they find files about experimental drugs that are being used on the girls. It turns out that the military is trying to create a drug that will breed soldiers with superhuman strength. They are funding the sanatorium so the principal can use the drug on the girls to test them out. Till now, they have found that the drug provides temporary superhuman powers before causing death. This explains why Kazue could jump so high and why the girls get seizures and disappear the next day. In reality, they do not disappear but die because of the drugs being fed to them daily. The girls are interrupted when they hear the others yelling. On stepping outside, they see Yuka on a tree branch. She falls off of it and dies. The girls are asked to go back to their room by the counselor. 
Then, she notices that Shizuko and Kazue are not with the rest of them. Outside, they are running through the woods to get as far away from the sanatorium as possible. They ultimately reach a military base and have to stop. As they are about to turn around and run in the other direction, a soldier catches them. When the girls retaliate, Kazue gets shot in the back. Shizuko whispers something in her ear and runs away while the soldier brings Kazue back to the sanatorium. Then, the principal sedates her and restrains her to a bed. Meanwhile, Shizuko arrives in her office and retrieves a gun to help Kazue. She finds her in a room and something else catches her attention before she can help her friend. Suddenly, the soldier attacks her from behind and knocks her out. In the following scene, we see that the principal and the counselor have sedated all of the girls and are making them inhale a test drug. The principal is ecstatic because her experiment is about to be successful by the morning. However, the soldier has another plan. The principal has been treating him like a servant and insulting him. Since the experiment will be successful by the morning, this means the military doesn't need her anymore, so he is welcome to do anything he pleases. He tells her that he is taking over the authority of the experiment, but the principal refuses to cooperate. The counselor also sides against her and slaps her in the face. Soon, the place is swarmed by soldiers. Somewhere else, Kazue wakes up inside a box that is being filled with water. She tries to escape, but is trapped. A while later, Shizuko wakes up and runs to look for Kazue, but she comes across a room with several tanks with the girls frozen inside of them. To Shizuko's horror, Kazue is also inside a box. She cries, asking her to come out, but her friend is long dead. When the sadness washes away, rage takes over her. She goes outside to kill everyone who was involved in the experiments that killed her friend. Because of her superhuman strength, she easily picks up a heavy wooden door and throws it at the soldiers and the principal. They retaliate by showering bullets towards her, but she manages to dodge them and hide. Following that, she kills all the soldiers one after another. In the other room, the girls have also gained consciousness, induced with superhuman strength. They attack the counselor and strangle her. Somewhere else, the principal tries calling the military base, but Shizuko finds her before she can. The girl picks her up and throws her to the ground with little to no effort. Then, she is making her way to Kazue when suddenly, the principal shoots her. The bullet misses Shizuko and hits the box, breaking it. Kazue's lifeless body falls out of it, further enraging Shizuko. She picks up the principal and impales her on the wall. In the final scene, we see that the girls have killed each other, growing aggressive because of the drug that was given to them. They have also embroidered the counselor's body after killing her. The entire sanatorium is a mess and dead bodies lie everywhere. The only person alive is Shizuko, who is sitting by Kazue's corpse. The moral of this story is that steroids are no good. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications. Thank you for watching.